Hey there, it's Billy from Generative Labs. Today, I've got an exciting tutorial for you on how to create a stable diffusion API using RunPod Serverless. We're going to dive deep into RunPod Serverless, the prerequisites for getting started, and how to get up and running with your own stable diffusion API. We'll also cover how to run the API leveraging multiple models, including LoRa's and those trained with Dreambooth, and how to use text to image and image to image among other stable diffusion APIs. Before we start, make sure you have a few things ready. You'll need a RunPod account. Use the link in my helper file, link in the description. Docker and Git should be installed on your system. Also, you'll need to download a couple of custom models like those from CivitAI.com. Lastly, make sure Postman is installed to test your endpoint. Let's go. First, we'll need the serverless worker template from GitHub. You can find the link to the GitHub repository for the template in the helper file linked in the description. I have forked a version of the standard RunPod Automatic 1111 worker template, which includes all of my code modifications shown in this tutorial for supporting multiple models and additional API calls. Do a git clone of the repo URL to your local system. Next, download your custom models. For this tutorial, I've downloaded two models, one trained on photorealistic images, the other anime images. These can be checkpoint files, tensor safe files, LoRa's, and models trained using Dreambooth. Just remember to move the models into your worker template directory. Now, let's open the Docker file. If you're using tensor safe models, and name your models model.tensorsafe and model2.tensorsafe. You don't need to make any modifications. If you want to name your model something else, just find and replace what's there with the name of your models. Also notice the path where the models are being placed. LoRa's need to be put in a different directory. Check the helper file for the appropriate paths for the different types of models. Next, let's look at the handler file. The handler method defines the entry point, which calls a run interference function. I modified the run interference function to support a number of stable diffusion APIs beyond just text to image, including image to image and other endpoints for getting models, options, and setting options. You can use the file as is or make any changes you need. Now it's time to build the image using the docker build and tag commands. and now push the Docker image to a container registry. I'm using Docker Hub, so I use the Docker push command. Once your image has been pushed successfully, it's time to head over to RunPod. To create a serverless endpoint, you first create a template. You can use any name for your template. Create a template referencing the image pushed to Docker Hub. Note that you can increase the default container disk size here. I bump it up because I'm using large models.
then navigate to serverless. Then to my endpoints. Create new endpoint, then give it a name and select the template you just created. You can specify the minimum and maximum number of workers for this endpoint, as well as the idle timeout. The idle timeout indicates the amount of time and seconds idle workers will stay running for new requests, where queue delay is used to adjust worker counts based on wait times. All right. Make sure to note the ID of the serverless endpoint you just created. You can find it in the UI right here. You'll need this ID in Postman in a moment. Lastly, you'll need an API key. From the menu, click on Settings, then API Keys, and create an API key. You need to store this securely. You won't be able to access this key again. With that, we're ready to try things out in Postman. I created a Postman configuration file to make this simple. Link is in the helper file. Click Import, then drag the file over, and click Import. You'll see a collection named RunPod Tutorial. Click on the Variables tab. You need to paste your serverless endpoint ID and your API key. That's it for configuration. Simple. The collection creates four requests. One for running jobs async. Another for running jobs async, but with a webhook. Another for running sync jobs. And one for getting the status of a currently running job. We'll look at each of these now. Let's start with running jobs async. Click on run async in the navigation. In the request body, you'll see a key called API name. You set its value to the name of the stable diffusion API you want to invoke. Remember these are the APIs that I exposed in the handler file. We'll start by using the text to image API. Because we're running the request async, we get back a job ID. We'll take the job ID, copy it, then call get status using it. Just paste the ID into the end, right after status, making sure to keep the forward slash after status. We can continue to make requests here to get the latest status. The job is complete and we have an image. The Postman configuration file I provided includes a script for visualizing images right in Postman. Just click on visualize to see the image. Now, instead of making async requests and having to repeatedly check its status using get status, we can simply issue sync requests. A sync request will wait until the request is complete, then return the response. Let's issue another synchronous request to see the other models available. Change the value of API name to get models. The response payload shows we have two models available. One named Model Safe Tensor and the other named Model 2 Safe Tensor. Copy the full Model 2 Safe Tensor string. Now in the request body, Paste the model name as the value of the SD model checkpoint key, like this. Issue the request again. Since this model was trained using photographs, you'll see a photo realistic version of the girl at the beach.
you can verify that the model was used by looking at the response payload. You'll find a key named SD model hash and can verify that it matches the value of what we specified in the request payload. Now let's copy the base 64 encoded image and use it to make an image to image request. Make sure to copy just the base 64 encoded string. We'll change the value of API name to image to image. And we'll add a new key named init images. Init images is a key that takes an array of base 64 encoded strings. Copy the base 64 string and paste it in. Let's change the prompt in some small way, just to show it working. We'll change her hair color. Lastly, let's get a list of the current stable diffusion options. Just change the value of API name to get options to see what they are. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please give it a thumbs up. Your support really helps us out. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tutorials like this one. We're always working on new content to help you master the latest tools and techniques in image generation and beyond. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials, please leave a comment below. We love hearing from you and your feedback helps us make better content. Until the next.